So now today, we're going to see how do we divide any po two polynomials. Now, the method that we're going to be using today is called long division. And just like the name says it, it's going to be a little bit long. So now, let's talk about the setup. We need to understand what are we doing here. So we have the numerator divided by the denominator, m squared minus 7m minus 11. That's going to be divided by n minus 8. So now, the setup for this kind of for this kind of division is going to be the numerator. It's going to be inside a box. So let's write our numerator here. M square. It's not equal to no, M square minus 7M minus 11. And that's going to be divided by N minus 8. So the denominator is going to be on the outside. And minus 8. So now we have the setup correctly. So now we can perform the operation. Now, how do we exactly divide? Well, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Your answer is going to be right here. And we're going to create our answer one term at a time. Now, how do we create our answer? Well, we got to start asking ourselves questions. You need to multiply, you need to do one term at a time. So first, we got to see, why do I need to multiply this m by to make it into an m square? So we see that if we multiply m times m, we're going to get m square. So that's why we're going to be writing m there, because our question is, m times 1 gives us the inside. So m times m, that's m square. And now you gotta do the same. Now that you create your number, you need to multiply the other term, which is negative eight. So now we're gonna multiply negative eight times m, that's negative eight m. Now that we have wrote the numbers on the inside, we gotta flip the signs. So we first multiply, and then we flip them. And now we combine m squared, so we're going to cancel out, which is what we wanted. So now we combine like terms, 8m times plus 7m, that gives us m, and we're going to bring down the next term, minus 11. So now again, we need to ask ourselves, why do I, why does it I need to multiply this m by, why do I need to multiply this m by to make it into an m? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We need to multiply it by 1. So that's going to be our other term for our answer. So now we multiply m times 1, that's m, negative 8 times 1, that's negative 8. But again, once we have it on the inside, we need to change the signs. So now this becomes a plus, and that becomes a minus. They cancel out. And now we have 3. So now we need to ask, so why do I, what is it that I can multiply this m by to make it into a 3? There's really nothing that you can multiply it by. So what do, how, we need to take this 3 into in consideration as in our answer. So how do we do it? We just add it to our answer. Now, we're going to put, just call the remainder. We're going to put our remainder plus remainder divided by what initially we had it divided by m minus 8 and this so our answer is what we create on the up on the upper side which is going to be m plus 1 plus 3 n minus 8 this is our answer I know the process is a little bit tricky, but it's just one of those things that it comes with practice. So let's try another example. Okay, so we have, let's talk about the setup first. To set up the numerator, it's inside a box. So let's create our box. So we're going to have our box here. Let's put the numerator there. And square minus n 
minus 29 and the denominator goes on the outside and minus 6. So this is just a setup. We have not started the problem. Now again, we need to start asking ourselves, well, what is it that I can multiply this n by to make it into the first term inside? So why do I need to multiply this n by to make it into an n square? So we see that n times n is n square, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we multiply n times n, n square. Now we need to distribute the other term as well. So negative 6 times n, that's negative 6n. And again, so you first multiply the two terms, you have something, and you need to change the sign. Always, don't forget to change the sign. Because what we want to do is we want them to cancel. We always want the first thing to cancel. So they cancel, so that's good. So now we have, we combine 6n minus n, so we got 5n, and we bring the next number now. And we ask ourselves the same question again. Well, why do I need to multiply this n to make it into the first term that we want, which is 5n? So why do I need to multiply this n by to make it into a 5n? Well, that's 5. So we put a 5 there. So now we multiply n times 5. So that's 5n. Negative 6 times 5. We got negative 30. Okay, so we have our terms. Don't forget to flip the sign. So that's plus, that's minus. They cancel out, which is exactly what we want. So now we combine 30 minus 29. So that's 1. We have a remainder again. So we need to reflect a remainder in our answer. So how do we do that? We're going to come back here. We remainder divided by the numerator, or denominator, which is minus 6. So that means our answer is equal to n plus 5 plus 1 n minus 6. Again, let's go with the process. If you have it outside, you need to start asking your questions. Why do I need to multiply by? to get the inside. So n times n equals n squared. We distribute again. We got 6n. We change the sign. We combine like terms. Now again, this might look a little bit confusing. It might be. It is. It's a long process. But it's just one of those things that you get with practice. So let's do another example here. There's stats where they're going to give you the problem this way. So the first thing that we want to do is just rewrite it. So we can rewrite this problem as n squared minus 3n minus 21 divided by n minus 7. Okay, so we just rewrote it. We have not done anything to it. So once we have that, what we need to do is we need to set it up. So again, our setup is the same. I'm gonna create a box. So we have our box here, numerator on the inside n squared minus 3n minus 21 denominator on the outside n minus 7 let me separate that okay so now we have our setup now we need to find our answers again we're going to be finding our answer one term at a time how we need to see what is it that i need to multiply this n to obtain this n squared why do I need to multiply this n to obtain that n square? Well, that's n because n times n gets me n square. So now that we have found out our number, we need to distribute. So we multiply n times n gets me n square. Negative 7 times n gets me negative 7n. Again, don't forget to change the signs or change your signs before we combine. Cancel out, which is what we want. So we have 7n minus 3n, so that's uh, positive 4n. And we bring down the next term, minus 21. Okay, again, now we need to ask yourself, why do I need to multiply this n to obtain this 4n? n times what gives me 4n? Well, 
that will be 4. So that's our next term in our answer. So now we multiply n times 4, that's 4n. 7 times 4, 7 is so that's minus 28. Again, you're not going to combine right now, you need to change the sign. Change the sign before combine. Now they cancel out. So now we have 28 minus 21, so that's 7. Now they have a solid number, that's called a remainder. So our remainder, we need to put it in our answer. We need to reflect in our answer. So we're going to add the next term. So that's remainder over n minus 7. So that means our final answer is equal to n plus 4 plus 7 divided by n minus 7. Okay, so now look at the last example here. Again, the first thing you want to do here is just set it up, set the box up. So let's set a box. We have our box, numerator on the inside, 2x squared minus 17, not 7, 17x minus 38, denominator on the outside, so 2x plus 3. Okay. So now we set it up. Why do I need to multiply this 2x to obtain a 2x squared out? Well, that'll be x. Because 2x times x gives me 2x squared. So we multiply 2x times x gives me 2x squared. We need to distribute both terms. So we also need to distribute that 3. So 3 times x gives me 3x. Before we combine, don't forget to change the sign. So negative 2, and negative 3, x. So now we can combine now. So they cancel out. So we got negative, um, what is that, negative 20, minus 38. And again, we start asking ourselves, why do I need to multiply this 2x to obtain a negative 20x? 2x times what gets me negative 20x? Well, in this case, that will be, that will be negative 10. So we have 2x to the negative 10. That's negative 20x. 3. Tell me about that. So 3 times negative 10. That's negative 30. Before we combine, don't forget to change the sign. So we gotta change it. If it's a plus, and if it's a negative, it comes a plus. Combine. So what do we have here? Negative eight. We have a remainder. So we gotta put a remainder in our final answer. So let's put that in. So negative eight divided by two x plus three. Okay, so now let's finish it off by saying, well, after all this, my answer is equal to x minus 10 minus 8 divided by 2x plus 3. Now, before we finish, I want to point out that you're not always going to have a remainder. There's times where you can get a remainder of 0. It turns out that all the examples that we did, we had a remainder, but in the case that you have a remainder of zero, then you pretty much don't add anything on the numerator. If your remainder is zero, then you will add a zero here, and that's pretty much doing nothing to it. So when we have a remainder of zero, we just have what's, what's on top of the box. And that's pretty much it for today.